your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, SD. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for giving me some of your time. You could be doing anything other than spending time with me, but you're spending time with me, and I am appreciative. Toasters. Well, first off, hit that like button. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to say it. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. But definitely hit the like button. Toasters, I was looking at the interview that Steve Harvey, the comedian, uh, the game host, the uh, beauty talent host, actor, comedian, uh, I mean, we go on and on, right? Steve Harvey has done some amazing things. And I was checking out the interview he did on Shannon Sharp's podcast. Great podcast. Shannon Sharp is doing his thing. Uh, I'm not surprised his, his podcast is doing well. I'm surprised it's doing as well as it's doing. This came out of left field. But I think it's doing better than uh, the show he does on Fox with Skip Bayless. I think it's doing. Uh, I think it's doing better than that. Undisputed. I think it's doing better than that, numbers-wise. And so, uh, congratulations to Shannon Sharp. But I was checking out the episode where Steve Harvey was on it. And I got charged with battery. Let's see. I was checking out the episode Steve Harvey was on. And man, it was profound. It was really profound. Now in life, man, we uh, we disagree with people. Uh, people disagree with me. I disagree with people, and that's fine. But I think we should be objective and search, and maybe not even search, but be open to finding something we have a commonality to, right? We agree on. Uh, so I agree a lot with Steve Harvey. Some things I do not agree with Steve Harvey on, and that's okay. It doesn't make me right, doesn't make him wrong, and vice versa, man. That's, that's life. Uh, but, you know, I never come on and bash anyone because we have a difference of opinion. I really don't even speak on a lot of brothers or, or sisters uh, that I have a difference of opinion on unless it's doing harm to society. You know, if you're a detriment to society, I think I have a responsibility to speak up. I think we all, uh, well, all that recognize uh, this is a detriment to society has a responsibility to speak up. Uh, so I don't see anything like that in Steve. Just, you know, we have a difference of opinion, and that's okay. That's it's perfectly fine. And you can do that when you're not a fan of any man. When you can be objective, be fair, and say, I agree with this, I don't agree with this, and you don't have to bash anyone. But the interview he did with Shannon, man, was profound, was amazing, it was transparent, it was gold. It was really gold. He dropped a lot of jewels, a lot of jewels that he's acquired over time in his life and that he's acquired from his, his granddad, his grandma, his mother, uh, his dad, uh, you know, just life. He dropped a lot of jewels. Man, this is a gold interview. I, I encourage you to check it out. I really do. Gold interview. But something that really stood out, a lot of things stood out. But something that I really want to talk on or speak on is when he mentioned when he was on cloud nine, making a lot of money. 
Now, he shared some stories before he got to making the money that were gold, too. But I want to talk about specifically when he said he was making money and he went through a tragic time, a tragic time, a challenging time. I won't say tragic, a challenging time. He was going through a divorce. And not only was he going through a divorce, he discovered that he was getting ripped off by a CPA and allegedly, you know, he suspected the CPA was in cahoots with the wife, now former wife, and they were ripping him off. So he went from millions to, I believe, you know, he, he said, you know, don't, you know, don't quote me on this, but I believe it was around uh, $1,750, you know. Um, yeah, and a lot of it to his own doing, he admitted, you know, just spending badly, not investing wisely, not on top of his game. And he made it back from that. And I'm gonna skip some things for us. But long story short, he was at rock bottom. And he made it back from that because he was available. He was available to receive opportunity. He was also available because I believe, he didn't say this, but I believe because Although he appreciated the money, he appreciated the fame, he appreciated the comfort, enjoyed it immensely, which is nothing wrong with that. But I believe he was able to bounce back because, yeah, I'm outside, y'all. Like, y'all hear some noise. I'm downtown. So I believe he was able to bounce back because he wasn't a slave to the money. He wasn't a slave to the fame. And so he was able to bounce back even when he hit rock bottom. You can always, always make it back if you remember who you are and what you are. And either don't become a slave to anything, or when you recognize you are a slave to something, snap out of it. Snap out of it, and you become the master. And you remember who you are and why you're here. You can bounce back. You can bounce back from anything. Anything. And I've bounced back from things. Um, I've been a slave to things. You know, I've been a slave to things. I've been a slave probably to a couple of women I was into. Um, I definitely was a slave to my kids. And I talk about this in the book, but I hit rock bottom when I was detached, separated from my kids. I hit rock bottom. And I was like, damn, this is, a, is this normal? Is this normal? Anything you can't live without, you are a slave to. I repeat, anything you cannot live without, you are a slave to. I don't care what it is, man. Your kids, your spouse, your money, your career, uh, your pride, your image, clothing, your looks, you know, I've seen people tell stories of getting dashed with uh, acid, beauty queens, beautiful people, and their disgruntled spouses poured acid on them and it messed up their looks. And these people didn't commit suicide. They didn't jump off the bridge, they didn't stab themselves, they didn't take a bunch of pills. And they show their faces on television and tell their story. And these were beautiful people. That means they were not a slave 
to their looks or recognized they were a slave to it and fought back and remembered who they truly are. Anything you can't live without, you are a slave to. And I've been in that position. And so, man, I want to really commend uh, Steve. I think he needs to be commended, saluted, telling the story, because people need to hear this. People really need to hear this. It's a powerful interview. But anything you are, you cannot live without your slave to. And I had a woman uh, one time I was dating ask me, do you think you could live without me if we weren't together? Now, I could have taken that different ways, man. It could be pretentious, it could be arrogance, it could be insecurity, but she felt like she couldn't live without me and she wanted to make sure I was on that same vibe. It could have been a bunch of things. I didn't dive into it, really. But I told her, yeah, I could definitely live without you. Uh, it would be rough in the beginning. It would take some getting over. It would take some time. But I could definitely live without you. And that's not the answer she wanted to hear. But that's the answer she needed to hear. And that's the answer I needed to hear. I need to tell myself. You know, and you need to tell yourself that always about anything, man. Uh, no matter what kind of house you got, car, prestige, anything, man. Do not get so attached. I'm not saying don't get attached to anything. Don't get so attached to where you feel you cannot live without it because you become a slave. And once you become a slave, man, you'll do anything. You'll do things out of desperation. You will hurt yourself in different ways. You know, I was reading an article about uh, John D. Rockefeller Jr. Well, actually, I was reading about Senior too, but I was reading about Junior in particular. And Junior, well, let's go back to Senior. Senior, John D. Rockefeller Senior was a hustler. Uh, snake oil salesman. A swindler. And um, it was alleged, he was accused, he was indicted for uh, raping a woman. He tried to avoid prosecution, ran away, left his family. Yeah, you can look all this up, left his family. Um, you know, but he was always hustling, always swimming on people, getting over. And that lets me know he had a fear of doing without. He had a fear of really seeing what his true potential was and doing it the right way. He wasn't secure in knowing I could do it the right way, I could do it the righteous way and still acquire what I want to acquire. So anyway, he lived a long life. I think he lived in 95, I believe, maybe longer, but Anyway, from his seed uh, comes Junior. He had a few children, but Junior comes. Junior stars Standard Oil. Huge, huge company, right? Uh, I think he started along with his brother. I can't uh, remember his brother's name, but he started with his brother. He comes from Senior, right? Now it's reported that Junior had this deep, deep, deep fear of losing his fortune and being impoverished. He had this deep fear of that. He used to dream about it, wake up in cold sweats, of being impoverished and losing all his wealth. Look this up. Well, he displaced, or he projected, I don't want to say projected, he displaced or, or spread that energy onto his kids also. And his kids had a deep fear. His daughters, his sons had a deep fear. His grandkids had a deep fear of being impoverished. Because they were slaves to their fears, they were slaves to the money. And as a result, 
he had a daughter that killed her kids and then committed suicide. He had a son that killed himself, I believe. A lot of tragedy, a lot of tragedy. And it was all a result from fear and being a slave of fear, being a slave to money. And it's not even real. That's the thing, it's not even real, it's all in their heads. The Rockefellers are still prominent to this day. So was the fear even real? It was not even real. And they experienced all that tragedy because they were slaves to their fears, they were slaves to money. And we, we, we do that to this day, all of us. Do all of us have the money the Rockefellers have? No. But we're slaves and we enslave ourselves every day because of fear. Of fear. You know, when I was uh, going through my situation with the custody battle and all that, the criminal case, and I write it in the book, I tell it in the book. Man, I always had a fear of uh, being jailed. I always had a fear of being jailed because where I grew up, a lot of guys were getting locked up. A lot of guys were dying. I never had a fear of dying, really, but I had a fear of being imprisoned. Um, I just didn't want to be confined. I wasn't really worried about what goes on in prison. I'm not saying I'm a tough guy. I'm just telling you my truth. I wasn't afraid of what goes on in prison. I just didn't want to be confined. And that was a fear of mine. So when I was going through this stuff, man, that fear escalated. Man, it was it was crazy. Uh, I was stressed, couldn't sleep. Not only because I was a slave to my kids and the attachment I had to my kids, but I also had this fear. I was a slave to fear. I'm like, man, this might not go in my favor. And I could be detained, I could be incarcerated. But then one time, I don't, I don't know what, I think what it was, I got a, uh, I was diagnosed with a blood clot in my leg. I mean, I've always been healthy, athletic, you know, I take care of myself moderately well. I smoke cigars, you know, I drink a little liquor, but drink more water than anything, and I eat my fruit and vegetables, I juice and I fast, you know. I, I do pretty good, right? So I've never had any issues. I was diagnosed with a blood clot. And I was going through that whole thing, man, to, to take blood thinners and get rid of that, right? And at some point I said, you know what? This ain't worth it. This ain't worth my health, this ain't worth my life. I can't control people. I can't control how people feel, I think, what they do, but I can control how I react, what I think, what I feel, and what I do. And that's what I take control. And I, I stopped fearing being incarcerated. I'm like, man, what's gonna happen is gonna happen. You know, I beat it, beat everything, thrown out. But that was a real fear of mine. Um, it was. And so once I released that, things started changing. I have no fear of that. I have no fear of anything now. Yeah, I have no fear of anything. I'm not uh, enslaved to anything. I have no fear of being broke. I've been broke. I've been up. I've been hella up. Uh, I won't say I've been hella broke, but I've been, I've been broke. But um, I'm good. I have no fear and life is amazing because I have no fear you know all I can control is me in my orbit and send out good energy and whatever happens happens you know we're all players we're all actors in this play in this stage called life and I can only control so much. So I had to release 
and I encourage you to release. And that's what I got from Steve Harvey's interview with Shannon Sharp that he released. Because that brother hit rock bottom. I can go into the whole interview, but he hit rock bottom. And people have stories that are <laughs> more grave than his or more dramatic than his. And those people have stories that are more dramatic than, than theirs. Uh, so you can't complain or you can't sit in the pool of complaining. You can't sit in the pool of misery and woe is me. Have your moment and keep it pushing, man. Pick yourself up. Keep it pushing. Somebody has it worse. And you can rebound, and you will rebound from anything. I promise. You'll rebound from anything. But uh, yeah, that's why I want to share with the toasters. Don't be a slave to anything. And I know it's tough from some from some of you. Like, man, my kids, my woman, my my image, my job. No, we can go on and on, right? But. At what cost? At what cost? And what does it really matter at the end? When you die, what will they say about you? What will they truly remember? All that matters really is the lives you impact. That's, uh, that's all that's gonna be talked about, the lives you impacted in a negative way, in a positive way. That's it. That's all that matters. Uh, the lessons you received, the lessons you gave out. That's it. Don't sweat it. And I know people say that's easier said than done, but I'm speaking from experience. And like I said, people have worse stories than me. I promise you. So, listen. I think I got it easy. I wouldn't trade my life for anyone's. Because I know what I'm dealing with. I know what I've dealt with, with the cards I was dealt with. And even though your life <laughs> may seem better, I don't know everything you're dealing with, everything you got to deal with. So I'll take my chances with my debt, or well, with my hand. I take my, I take my chances with my hand, and I encourage you to take your chances with your hand, think positive, and know you may have a hand that doesn't look so bright, doesn't look good. Man, you can turn that thing to a winning hand. I've done it many times in life and in spades. And in life and in spades, I've seen many people have a great hand. And they don't meet their books. They don't get their books in spades. They don't get their books or reach their potential in life. That's just how it goes. Be grateful for what you have. Uh, have your moment. Get out of it. Think positive. Live on a high vibration. And just know, man, uh, anything is possible. But you have to think it first. Think it, believe it, and move forward. And you can do anything. I promise you. I promise you. I'm out, but I got a movie coming out. Yeah, I got a movie coming out. Perfect match. Uh, hopefully, the last audition is this coming Friday. But if not, we gotta do another audition to find who we wanna find. But the goal is to start filming in mid-June. Perfect match, it's a comedy, comedy drama, dramedy. And uh, I had to steer it away from my book, Palmer Christie, three book series. Still working on that. And I got some other projects I'm doing for people. Um, out of Oakland, my boy Grawl, if you're watching this, I ain't forgot about you. We spoke or we communicated recently, I ain't forgot about you. But um, yeah, man, stay busy, stay productive, stay on your mission, stay on your grind, and uh, let's get to it. As always, toasters, love, peace.